Gaming has always been known as a male-dominated industry. With games like Call of Duty and Halo, those games are known to only have male audiences. I mean, this all started with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo, when pushing the game over from Japan to America due to the video game crash, they didn't know where to put it. So they made a decision and put their Nintendo Entertainment System in the boys' aisle. This created years and years of misogynistic marketing and masculinity-centered games, right? And it's even proven that 41% of women play games. Yes, those are mobile games, which many male and misogynistic gamers will say aren't real games, but they're still video games. And video games are an incredible, incredible form of entertainment that I think everybody should be able to enjoy. Esports is even a different story. Esports is competitive video games at the highest level. These players fine tune and work on their skills to make sure they can make a career out of playing video games. But because of the misogyny that exists in online gaming and the misogyny that exists, especially in shooter games, there aren't that many women in esports. Before we talk about the main topic of this presentation, I want to talk about Valorant. Valorant is a 5v5 hero shooter played all over the world. Valorant came out during quarantine in 2020 and it became a hit. I played Valorant for at least 200, 300 hours and I don't even have that much time compared to some of my friends. Valorant has international competition. Valorant's esports scene is huge with a year long circuit ending with Valorant champions at the end of the year. Players fly in from all over the world to Berlin last year to be able to play for the chance to be number one. Valorant has made strides to make sure that gaming is inclusive above all else, however. Now, they've created a league called Game Changers. Game Changers is Valorant's first non-men, marginalized gender-only league. Now, the main thing that they're trying to go for is make sure the game is not the WNBA. The game Changers isn't meant to be a women's league or a place that isolates women away from men. Instead, its role is to prove to tournament organizers, to gamers, the community, and especially prove to team owners that picking up players of marginalized genders on their main rosters is worth it. Yes, the first team to do it is going to take a risk, adding a non-men player to their originally all-male roster. But once that first team makes the move, we're gonna see so many more marginalized genders in esports, and we're gonna see esports be the first sport to have true fairness across genders. Now, I first have to note here that Riot, the developer of Valorant, does have a lot of allegations under its belt. Riot's always been controversial, as in the past, their leaders and higher-ups have been involved in misogynistic business practices. But Riot's been doing a great job lately with Game Changers. They've launched an amazing international where eight teams from all over the world of marginalized genders are able to compete for the world's number one spot. Their marketing for this has been amazing. I'm here gonna show you a clip from one of their pieces hyping up the event. We're going to absolutely be merciless at this event. Here disrespecting the server. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. Don't blink. Game Changers got incredible production quality, and I am so excited to see what comes next for Game Changers. But with Game Changers as kind of a stepping stone for women and those of marginalized genders to progress into video games, I wanted to get feedback from those who are already competing in the esports industry. What challenges have they gone through and what can be done further to make sure that marginalized genders are able to succeed the best they can? So go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Kayla. This is the Rookie Tournament going the way of Event Horizon. So uh, hello, uh, my name is Katie. Nice. Nice. Nice, Katie. Katie Dia. Hi, I'm Ray. Holy oh, shit! Oh, it's a breakfast. Oh my god. I play Overwatch. I am a 
I play for a tier 3 Overwatch team as a substitute main support. Um, I am a, currently a graduate student at Virginia Tech, and um, I founded uh, Man I Love Vlogs, which is my competitive esports organization. I play Valorant, and I stream on Twitch. I don't have a camera, but I'm blushing right now. <laughs> so what was your first venture into video gaming? Uh, I've been gaming, like, my entire life. Um, I used to watch my brother play single-player games, and it wasn't until Minecraft came out in, like, 2009 or 10 that I got into that. And I did that for so many years, just every day playing <laughs> with my friends online. And then when Overwatch came out, something else, like... <laughs> I, I haven't stopped playing it for, like, six years. <laughs> I have always grown up with uh, all of my cousins are older. Um, I always remember like uh, playing on my PS, like playing on PS2, playing Tekken, uh, Dynasty Warriors in the back of my uncle's ice cream shop um, with all of my cousins and my brother. I've always grown up playing different types of um, console games as well as when we shifted over towards PC, we always played on my like that one computer that we all shared. Uh, I started playing games like Maple Story, Toontown, but it wasn't until um, around high school when I was around like 14, 15, when I actually started playing competitively and I started playing um, games such as Gary's Mod or um, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And then um, it wasn't until when Valorant uh, came out, I started playing competitively Overwatch, if you guys know Overwatch. Um, my freshman year of college, I played for Virginia Tech. Um, and I think that's where it started ramping up, where I was like, hey, I'm actually pretty good at games. Since I was a kid, I was playing video games. Um, I, my first little thing I had was a Game Boy. I would play Pokemon and like, and then from there, I just went to like consoles. And then from console, I'm on PC. So basically my whole life, I've been playing video games. So growing up, what was your perspective of competitive gaming, especially identifying as a marginalized gender? Um, I never really thought that I'd be able to, like, get as far as I am today, especially in competitive gaming. There aren't a lot of women, like, especially when I was younger, there were barely any, like, women or, uh, any non-binary, like, presented people, like, in the professional leagues. It was completely dominated by men. I, I didn't really think that that was something that I'd ever be able to reach on my own, especially as a woman. Um, I definitely didn't notice anything, um, you know, in like regular gaming, except the fact that, you know, when you grow up, you're just like, you, you play like normal games, but then people start making comments and saying like, well, games aren't for girls. Like, oh, you're a girl gamer. And it, it was always, there was always a negative connotation, almost as if it was a derogatory way of like looking down on women for playing games. It wasn't until we I started joining into Counter-Strike when I noticed how incredibly toxic the community was. Not only were they extremely sexist, but they were also racist, discriminatory, um, ableist. And when I started competing, um, collegiate specifically, there were a lot of experiences where people would simply, the moment you say one word in the game, they would just be like, girl, 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 is that a female? And it was always every single thing was made about gender when it never had to be. Surprisingly, I guess because, uh, People didn't really know I was a girl until I got older. I was probably sounded like a little boy, so they thought I was like a little kid. So when I was young playing COD, I didn't really experience a lot of like people being rude. I mean, it's a COD lobby, but they weren't attacking me for being a female until I got older and I started like streaming and stuff and people found out I was a girl. Basically, when people didn't know I was a girl, I didn't experience anything. When I became a girl, people just started becoming like really rude or they would try to make me feel like I was less than them or not as, as skilled as them and I would never be as skilled as them. When you're in practice or when you're out in the lobby, how has competitive gaming treated you? Oh, I never use voice chat anymore. Um, I'll, I'll sit in it and listen but if I talk, it's 
usually putting a target on my back to get harassed. So uh, nowadays, I think because I am at I'm playing at a higher skill level, there will always be those trolls like on social media and everything like that. However, the community is starting to see a slight shift over um, fostering these and um, including any sort of person, regardless of gender, regardless of um, identification, and regardless of anything. Um, however, I think there will always be that space um, in that corner of people who are still always going to be sexist and people who whose views they just do not agree with inclusion, which is ridiculous. But um, I definitely do think it has gotten a little bit better. There are always going to be blips here and there. Recently, as of late, people aren't as bad. But I would say like a few years ago, people were more like rude and sexist. But it didn't really bother me much. I don't know, it's really hard to get me like upset and mad because whatever you say about me, I know it's not true or I've probably heard worse in my own head so it doesn't really bother me and plus it's nice when i actually like okay it feels nice when i shit on them in the lobby it's kind of like forced for you to put respect on my name overall what's the worst experience you've had in esports oh um i had actually i i played with a team we won a tournament we were all super close and super great friends but one of us had to drop for, for personal real life reasons and the replacement that we got seemed okay but for several weeks he was just so like weird towards me and the only other girl on the team <laughs> and it, it got to the point where we we just had to kick him because he was just always messaging us just weird questions one time, uh, this was like way back when I realized how toxic uh, the gaming community could be. I just started playing alone. Um, I queued into one game alone. I said one word in the game. And for the rest of the game, they kept shooting me. They kept throwing grenades at me. Um, they kept team killing me. And they actually found my stream and they doxed me. They figured out my name. They figured out where I lived. Um, they found and they started to spam bots in my chat, um, like screaming, calling me slurs. Um, so that was great. Um, <laughs> that was the worst. Yeah, that was the worst. Um, experience I think I've ever had in esports. Um, but in a more professional sense, I think one of the funniest but um, worst thing was uh, this, I think a year or two years ago, when I played for Virginia Tech esports, uh, like our Valorant esports collegiate team, um, we actually played against Penn State. Those Penn State boys, I actually got them banned, uh, three of them, because they started, as soon as I said one word in that lobby, you would think that grown college boys would know better in a professional esports collegiate setting. But I said one word and they screamed, is that a female? And started breathing heavily. And then it, some of them started making comments saying like, Oh, we would be professionals too if um if I if I, if I was a female, if I was a girl. And they started stalking through my social medias and they found all the information on me in the middle of our match. So that was interesting. Did you win? Yeah, we oh we absolutely crushed them. We like won 13-3. Like we absolutely <laughs> demolished them. It was embarrassing. Surprisingly, my worst experience has been with other other women, surprisingly, honestly. When I was like competing in COD, I actually had like a group of girls, like they didn't like me. First, I don't know why they didn't like me, but they actually like would bully me. And it, it wasn't just me, it was like me and my best friend. They made us seem like we were weird or whatever, which is so funny because now like, cause me and my best friend used to always say like sus, like sus stuff. Like we were always like. Just to interject here, I might have to explain the term sus. Uh, it's really common for uh, girls in these communities uh, to jokingly flirt with each other a ton. Of course, consensually, but that's what she means when she says the word sus. Sus, like towards each other. And now it's like normalized or whatever. And those same girls that like bullied me and her do the exact same thing on Twitter. But I'm gonna just sip my tea over here in the corner. 
Valorant and Overwatch have introduced new programs such as Game Changers and Calling All Heroes. How do you feel these programs contribute to the progression of gender inclusivity in esports? I think it's great uh, for for women and other minorities to like have their own safe place for them to game without any like worry about any harassment or things like that. I think the moderators for like service like that too are doing an amazing job keeping like the community nice and clean and safe. Um, of course, uh, there are people that still like try to get into these like circles for some reason but besides like the few like bad eggs it, it's been a pretty good experience from what i've seen and from what my friends have experienced too i definitely do think that um it is a huge push for um these types of communities to foster such a loving and commune uh, and like a, such a inclusive community and environment just because people always say like well um it doesn't make any sense like why do you guys get your own like little like little space to play like that doesn't make any sense you guys are like discriminating against yourselves like that's not the point of it the point of it is growing the fact that we grew up being told consistently that gaming is not for women gaming is not for marginalized genders however once we start creating these programs um that they act almost as a catalyst they start bringing in more marginalized genders um and saying like hey we have a space for you are you interested and the amount of people that have come to me and said like i had no idea like i wasn't really interested in that in like so many games because like so many people were so toxic all the time or playing competitively it wasn't until i saw um game changers that it actually pushed me to want to play so i think it's a great way uh could it, kind of putting ourselves out there and saying hey it's not that scary at all there are other people here who are like you too I feel like it's a, if executed correctly, it can be a good thing. It's a double-edged sword, honestly, as with almost everything in life, because you can create this safe space for women, but it's also, it can also become really easily for them to get, not even just women, just marginalized genders, like just people where that community is built for to create that safe haven for, it can easily become a situation where you're trapping those people there and like kind of hindering their progression, which is why I say it's a double edged sword. I want it to have like, wa I want these communities to exist, but I also want, think that they should have it where it's an opportunity to grow past that like subgroup, kind of like a stepping stone instead of just saying, like, hey, all of you guys that can't fit here, we're putting you here. All right. And it's like here and now you can compete like it shouldn't be like that. But sometimes it can get there. And I would say that's the only downfall to having communities and leagues that are catered towards um, marginalized people is because it's very easy for them to get stuck there. But at the same time, you're, you're able to show or create like this platform this spotlight for them to show off their skills and their ability um as people and show that they're pretty f they're pretty fucking dope should these programs be phased out as the scene develops when tournament organizers and organization owners begin to pick up players of skill regardless of their gender identity i think it'll take a lot of time before the gaming scene is like fully understanding and accepting towards um, people of marginalized genders. Uh, so I don't think it... I, I think they're very important now and for the next couple years, but eventually if it does end up getting to a place where women and other marginalized genders are treated equally in the scene, I don't see the point for them to exist after that, but it's a long ways away. I think that these um, programs should, should still definitely exist. They should still be encouraged just because I think they're great. Um, almost they act as like role models or inspirations for people who are new to the scene. You know, it, it makes things um, not as scary as like just throwing yourself into the deep end. You know what I mean? Because like at the, at the, uh, the ultimate goal at the end of the day, you could ask any of these um, professional players that I've played with um, and even 70 professional and even for me specifically um, I think 
it's safe to say that 99% of us, the goal is to get to that level, is to play at that level where it doesn't have to be, like, because it doesn't have to be about gender. It isn't about gender. Um, when you are playing competitively, you are playing to be the best that you can be, the best version of yourself. Gender has nothing to do with it. And we all want to get to that level. It's just the fact that um, most of these people at the top level, they have had a head start on on most of, um, let's say, like, there are 100 men that grew up playing games. Um, they have all that experience, years and years of experience playing competitively. However, there how many women and marginalized genders that wanted to get into the scene were discriminated against, were treated differently, were highly discouraged from playing just because of our gender, how many of them would want to stay in this scene? Absolutely not, because we get clowned anywhere we go. So I think that these programs should still stay to encourage people to get into the scene. And we need to start normalizing, like you said, um, once we start seeing that the scene develops and um, seeing that all of these players are slowly getting um, leveling that playing field because we they had that head start. Meanwhile, we're seeing more women and marginalized genders getting into the scene, getting into competitive esports. And so we'll see the population grow as well. And we'll see the cream of the crop start rising to the top as well and um, leveling that playing field. But I still think that these programs should still exist. There should still be that safe space where some people just do not want to throw themselves in the deep end and have to risk. Like some people just want to play for fun. Why do they have to have to deal with like bringing gender into it? They just want to wind down at the end of the day and they just want to play games. They don't want to be clowned just for being a marginalized gender. I I will die on this fucking hill. I will die on this hill. It, it once if we reach the point where none of that no longer matters, then we no longer have a need for those separate leagues. You get me? Like I guess for like that you could keep it around for like maybe like the younger like the younger kids they're like getting into it but then it becomes something completely different after that it's no longer for the marginalized gender it's kind of like okay these are for the up-and-comers right it's not just specifically for like these people who have been like discriminated against or what have you but i do think if we not if when we do reach the point where gender no longer matters then it kind of makes having these separate leagues and communities that are catered towards those things redundant because then it's kind of like okay what is the point of you existing so then they should in turn they would most likely if they were smart just kind of like open it up to everyone and then like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in total the value of game changers cannot be forgotten it is an organization and a place where women and marginalized genders of all different backgrounds are able to explore the beautiful games that are Valorant and other first-person shooter games. And the goal is to create a more welcoming community and a place where everybody is able to enjoy the games they really want to enjoy. Special thanks to the three people I've interviewed in this video, uh, Katie Dinos, uh, Kayla Kazilla, and Ray Sunray. And special thanks to HUM210 for an amazing semester. This class helped me learn so much about women in history and I had such a good time hearing about your experiences and your perspectives and I'm going to miss you all as we go into the next semester. I hope you look back at this class and are able to smile about the memories you made with us. And this is Zach locking off. I'll see you later.